in today's video we are going to discuss about the digital storage oscilloscope or dso okay so we will be discussing about the block diagram its working its modes of operation and also some important questions connected with the digital storage oscilloscope so this is a very common device in all the laboratories right we have used this device and now let us see what all things are present inside this device so if you have not seen the video on cathode ray oscilloscope it is actually the basic one so if you have not seen the video on CRO, please do watch that video first, then watch this video. Then you will get a more clear picture. Okay. So anyway, let us see about the digital storage oscilloscope, what all things are present inside here. Now, before seeing the blocks or before seeing the block diagram, digital storage oscilloscope, the name is indicating that it is storing the, the input or the signals that is being fed to it in a digital format okay so the digital storage oscilloscope is a device which stores the inputs that is being given to it by first converting that to a digital format and also it is taking this data which is present in the memory that is a digital data is also being processed and it is an oscilloscope right so it also displays the waveform Okay, now let's see the basic block diagram, then you will get a more clear idea. Okay, so here you can see the input we are being feeding to the pre-amplifier and attenuator. Okay, so before discussing the block diagram, you should be knowing that here we are going to plot the signals in a two planes where there is an X plane, there is a Y plane. The X plane is having time as the variable and the y plane will have the corresponding amplitude or the value of the signal okay i'll now write it as amplitude so the waveform if it is a sine wave it will be like this here you should be knowing that the time that is not being given externally but it is internally generated in synchronization with the incoming input okay and the y-axis variable or the y-axis value we are getting from the signal which is being fed externally that is from this input okay so this thing you should be knowing as a basic input you are getting and that will be the value of the signal time is internally generated within this device okay now let's see the blocks so here input is being fed to the pre-amplifier and attenuator so the the working of the function of the pre-amplifier and the attenuator is to amplify the given input and also it attenuates the noises present in the input okay so that is the first unit now as i have told in the beginning that this is a digital storage oscilloscope so the signal that is being fed to the device is to be converted to a digital format so for that purpose the next unit is a sample and hold circuit we know that Sampling is one process which we do as a basic of digitization, right? So, the signal which is in the analog format is being sampled with the help of a sample and hold circuit and then it is fed to an ADC. So, ADC will convert that to a digital format, right? So, we will get a digital data, right? So, here at this point we will be having our digital data. And it is been given to a memory unit and hence the digital data is getting stored in this memory so that is why we are giving the name as digital storage oscilloscope so the data is stored in which format it is stored in the digital format right now we know that the data we also have to display on a screen right and we have to display the same waveform which are which we are feeding so if you are feeding a sine wave here we don't require the digital form display but we require the exact sine wave itself so for that purpose the digital data is again taken from the memory see here data output and it is given to a d to a converter so it will be converted back to the analog form and so here the output will be analog okay and it is given to the vertical amplifier and it is given to the crt okay so crt is a cathode ray tube so if you don't know the cathode ray tube working i would suggest you to watch the video on cathode ray oscilloscope so the cathode ray 
tube i'll just draw a rough figure for you for those people who don't know anything about crt so this is the structure of a cathode ray tube okay the cathode ray tube will receive the signal there is an electron gun and a beam of electrons is generated and this electron beam will hit on a phosphor coated screen and this electron beam will move in accordance with the input signal and will produce the waveform and in place of the electron beam we are also keeping some control grids to control the flow of this electrons then some anodes are also there pre accelerating accelerating and post accelerating anodes and there are deflection plates vertical deflection plates and horizontal deflection plates are there so as to control the vertical alignment of the wave and the horizontal alignment of the type so this is the structure of a crt again i would suggest you to watch the video on cr okay in that i have given a very detailed explanation so anyway you should be knowing that the crt is a device which is helping us to plot the waveform and it gives a waveform display okay so for displaying the waveform actually we are using the crt okay so here why we are using vertical amplifier as i have told here that we are feeding the signal to the vertical axis and the horizontal axis is having time which is being internally generated okay so this much portion correspond to the vertical axis display now here if you see there is a trigger circuit right so the trigger circuit is generating a trigger which will activate or give some signal to the control logic and the control logic will generate a time okay so this control logic is a unit which is generating the time see when we are seeing a signal we are actually seeing the amplitude and the corresponding time so the amplitude and the corresponding time should be in synchronization for particular time the amplitude is this for another time the amplitude is this so likewise there should be a synchronization right so for that synchronization purpose we are actually using this trigger circuit whenever we are getting an input signal the trigger circuit will trigger the control logic to generate the time corresponding to the input okay so we don't want a random time generation but we want a time generation in accordance with the input coming on the y axis right so for the corresponding amplitude we require the time so there should be a sync between the amplitude and the time and that is achieved with the help of this trigger circuit and the control logic will generate time here it again it will be in the digital format so for converting to that to the analog domain we are using a d to a converter here and it is fed to the horizontal amplifier see here the horizontal amplifier why it is being given because horizontal axis is having time vertical axis is having corresponding analog signals value whether it is voltage or amplitude whatever it is it is given to the vertical amplifier and then it is been given to the various deflection plates these are actually indicating the deflection plates these are the vertical deflection plates these are the horizontal deflection plates of the cathode ray tube so the cathode ray tube will have an electron beam generated and this electron beam when it hits on the phosphor coated or the luminous screen this electron beam creates actually a spot here and this spot actually moves and generate the waveform like this on the screen okay so this spot is called luminous spot okay so hence we will get our display so what all things are actually happening in this digital storage oscilloscope is there is digitization of the signal happening there is storage of the digital signal and also there is display of the given original signal also happening okay so these all things are actually happening within the digital storage oscilloscope and also if we require we can also have the processing of the signal also that is the processing of the digital signals also is is possible here okay so this is the basic working of a dso or a digital storage oscilloscope so the difference in between the dso and the cro the basic difference is that in cro there is no digitization we directly convert the, that is we directly receive the signal and we directly give it to the crt and we display it there is no digitization there is no storage units 
but here there is a storage unit that too in the form of digital okay so that is an advantage here so the dso is actually a more advanced version of cro's okay and this dso is having three modes of operation okay so let us see the three modes first then we'll see some modifications that have come later on in the basic dso block diagram okay so let us see what are the three modes the first mode is called the roll mode okay first i'll say the mode names first mode is roll mode second one is called store mode and the third one is called hold or save mode these are the three modes of operation of a dso i'll explain what are the three modes just know that there are three modes because these questions you can face in cognitive examinations i've seen questions asking what are the how many modes are there some uh, questions will be asking out of which out of the given options which is the mode of a dso these type of questions you will face okay so the three modes are there is a roll mode there is a store mode there is a hold or save mode the first one is roll mode okay in roll mode what is happening is rolling means displaying of waveforms okay so in the roll mode very fast varying signals are actually displayed on the screen that is if you are giving a time varying signal or a very fast varying signal to the input here then it will be displayed okay that is the roll mode then store mode means the given signal will be digitized and it is getting stored in the memory the display is not assured there but storage is given more importance then in the store mode means whatever signal we are giving it will be getting directly stored to the memory then third one is the hold or save mode in that some part of the signal will be holded for some time and then it will be stored in the memory so the signal that we are giving to the input line or the probe of a dso it will be getting holded for some time in the sample and hold unit and then it is getting stored to the memory so that is the three modes of operation okay so what are the three modes there is roll there is store and there is hold or save mode okay now let us see see uh, here i have told you that the data first is getting converted to which, which format digital format i'll write it here so this is the digital signal or the digital data and then it is again converted back to the analog format right and for converting the digital data that is present in the memory to the analog form again we are using a dac right and there are mainly two methods which are being used for this conversion of the digital signal to analog back analog domain back okay actually it was originally analog only but we have converted that to digital for the convenience of story and then we have interested in displaying the signal so we are again converting that back to analog so there are mainly two forms that we are using or two methods that we are using for the conversion that is first one is linear interpolation linear inter polation then the second one is called sinusoidal interpolation okay so i hope you cannot see it there so i'll write in the middle okay so the first method is linear interpolation then second one is sinusoidal interpolation so interpolation itself means adding of some zeros in dsp we have discussed about interpolation and decimation so interpolation means creating of false samples in between right so it can be done in two ways linear or sinusoidal so consider that you have given digital form of data is like this 
so consider that this is the given data in digital format okay now if you are following linear interpolation means you are just drawing of lines that is straight lines in between this dots or this digital form and you will get a waveform like this so this is called linear interpolation now if you are following a sinusoidal interpolation means you will have a data digital data like dots right then you will have a sinusoidal waveform for joining the dots or the digital form so this is the two type of dot joining methods okay so these two methods are actually called dot joining methods dot joining methods okay and this is method which is adopted in the dac conversion and display okay so the two methods that we are using is either linear interpolation or sinusoidal interpolation okay so that is the this is the basic things of a dso now consider that you are going to see some advanced versions of this dso some advanced advancements actually happened okay now we know that here we are having only one type of storage which is the digital storage that is we are only storing the data in digital format here right so for storing the digital format first we have to sample it then we have to convert to digital format right that is using an adc now when we are actually sampling the signal we know that there is a very famous problem that is ha that can happen while sampling the signal that is called aliasing that is a very basic thing so when the sampling rate is decreased what will happen there can be aliasing okay and when we are actually increasing the sampling rate another problem that can happen is the resolution of adc can get affected so consider that there are two lines of inputs this is input 1 and this is input 2 so there are two lines of input here and when these two lines of input are been input channels or input lines are there so there will be there can be two input channels right so if, if there are two input channels this input will be fed to the preamplifier and attenuator and these inputs has to be simultaneously sampled and digitized right so in order to avoid if you are increasing the sampling rate what will happen there can be some resolution problems that is the adc resolution will get lowered okay so to avoid this there is another mechanism which is been used in the modified versions of dso's that is the inclusion of a analog storage also okay so here there is only one type of storage which is a digital storage now to avoid the aliasing problems and the resolution problems of the adc we are going to include two analog storages also okay so these are the analog storages this also okay and with the help of a mux or a multiplexer we are going to select from these two storages and at a time only one storage will be selected and it is given to the adc for digitization so what will happen so here as the data is coming is less we can have proper sampling and the aliasing problems can be avoided okay so this is one method which are being used in the modified dso's to avoid the aliasing problems and the problem which are been created when we are increasing the sampling rate so when we increase the sampling rate to a very higher value the adc resolution will get lowered okay so to avoid these problems we are only selecting a one storage at a time so first we'll select this storage and then we'll digitize it and store in the memory and also there can be two digital storage also possible okay so one channel will be selected with the help of this mux and it is digitized and stored and then this channel will be selected or this storage will be selected likewise okay so for this purpose there is a advancements have advancement happening in dso's that is inclusion of an analog storage also okay so while studying or while drawing the conventional block diagram of dso's you don't need to include this analog storage just for your knowledge or just for your information purpose i'm just 
saying this okay so this is one common thing which have been seen in the all sampling circuit which is called aliasing right so to avoid the sampling uh, problems that is the aliasing problem we have to actually increase the sampling rate but we cannot also increase the increase the sampling sampling rate beyond a further limit okay so to avoid this we are actually going for some analog storages also okay just just have an information about this that's why i'm saying okay so this is the basic diagram only okay so this is all about the digital storage oscilloscope so we have discussed about all the basic blocks and how the signal is being getting stored how the signal is getting digitized how the time base is generated all those things we have discussed and also this control logic it can be some microcontroller or microprocessor okay which will be actually generating the time base okay so that's all about the digital storage oscilloscope next we are going to see some important questions from the dso digital storage oscilloscope so next we are going to see some important questions from dso we will be seeing the questions on board the first question is what is the main advantage of using digital storage oscilloscope a uses digital storage b uses analog storage c uses mixed mode storage d uses disk storage okay from the name itself it is clear that it is using what storage it is using a digital storage so correct answer is a which is the digital storage okay now again the question is from the same area itself but in a different form the question is coming okay so the question is second question the waveform is stored in dash a compressed form b analog form c digital form d mixed form correct answer is option c in digital form now if you see the modified versions of dso so you can see there are two storages actually but if you see the basic one only there is digital storage okay so you have to pick the option c digital store it is a digital storage oscilloscope so the storage is in digital form okay c is the correct answer so for uh, third question what oscilloscope is used in dso that is what type of oscilloscope means it is used for displaying displaying purpose what type of oscilloscope we are using we are actually using a crt right cathode ray tube we are using so from the options option a is multi trace b dual trace c modern d conventional now there is actually another type of oscilloscopes called dual trace oscilloscope but in dso we are using a basic or a conventional type of oscilloscope that is the crt we are actually using which is the same oscilloscope or the display device which we are using in cro itself that is in cro also and also in dso we are using this crt so it is a conventional one so the correct answer is d conventional okay now fourth question fourth question is the stored image can be displayed dash a for a limited time b for infinite time c for zero time d for intermediate time since it is stored in memory it can be displayed for infinite time that is a main advantage of dso since it is already present in our memory we can display it for infinite time okay since until the memory is been cleared or removed it will be present in the memory so for infinite time we can have the display that is the answer which is option b for infinite time fifth question fifth question is the analog signal is digitized using dash a d to a converter b oscillator c a to d converter d rectifier correct answer is very basic question it is 
using the analog to digital converter we are going to digitize the signal so it is a c is the correct answer a to d converter okay next question sixth one Sixth question is, a digital storage oscilloscope has, the question is regarding the modes, okay, A3 mode, B2 mode, C4 mode, D5 mode. Correct answer is, it is, have, it is having three modes. We have also seen what are the modes. It is roll, store and hold or save. Correct answer is, A3 modes is present, okay. Next question. So, the power requirement is for a DSO, the question is, for a DSO, the power requirement is A low, B medium, C high, D zero. Correct answer in digital storage oscilloscope, the power requirement is low only, okay. Correct answer is A low power requirement only, okay. It can be supplied with the help of a small bat battery, okay. So, that is the seven questions which I have included in this video. So, you can expect questions from what are the various functions of the blog what is this blog representing these type of questions you can uh, face and also the questions can come from the dot joining methods or what are the various methods used what are the two types of dot joinings and also regarding the modes there can be questions so these are the basic things you have to prepare for a digital storage oscilloscope or dso okay so i'm really hoping that you found the video useful if yes Please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.